All right, here we are, another edition of Live on KEXP at Home. So excited for this. My name is Troy Nelson, and uh, talk about memorable band names. Here we are with Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. We'll get to that later. But you uh, were so gracious to uh, perform for KEXP, and I want to say thank you so much for your time. How are you doing today? Good. No, thank you so much for having us on. It's uh, our little mini dream to, to be back in Seattle. So. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I yes, I wish we could be in person. Yeah. I know, I know. It'd be, it'd be mad, but here we are. I think we're probably the furthest people apart from each other as well. Yeah. It's very true. It's very true. Uh, what, what time is it in Australia right now? Well, the kookaburras are well, up. So it's, on yeah. the West Coast, where we are at 6.30. I am. <laughs> it's, it's early. It's been, it's been early a while now. Yeah. Been up for an hour though, so I'm, I'm doing all right. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to share your performance that you recorded for live on KEXP at home, and then we'll we'll have a chat. So here you go, world. This is psychedelic porn crumpets.
was the best take we've ever done of that song. <laughs>
All right, fantastic. That is Psychedelic Porn Crumpets live on KEXP at home. What a fantastic performance. And once again, thank you so much for doing this. And you're talking about it's super early in the morning in Australia. And I don't really know what a kookaburra is. So <laughs> you were, we were talking about it a little bit. But what, what exactly is, is a kookaburra? Some kooky guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> hang around bins at night. They, uh, yeah. they look you weird in the eye when you walk past. No, uh, well, apparently they're a kingfisher. Yeah, it's a type of kingfisher bird. What does that uh, mean? They really... They look like half Their woodpeckers. beaks are really um, built for skimming the water and picking up fish. And, and they also, that. they swoop and get sandwiches. One stole a sandwich out of my hand when I was playing golf <laughs> once. And it was the most Yeah, yeah they're cheeky. They actually are cheeky. They man. laugh like monkeys. Like. And people usually think there's monkeys in Australia, but what they hear is that... <laughs> Of like a cookie <laughs> you might be able to hear that one. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've heard I've heard the name in like songs, you know, but just being from the states, I I, I just don't know what that is. But I, I hear it in songs like kookaburra uh, sits by the kookaburra old something sits, tree sits, or what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, as if you know that song. Yeah. That's a classic. We have to sing that in an assembly every <laughs> morning. That's a yeah. Uh, speaking of classic, by the way, and we're talking about. I mean, for, first of all. What is going on in Australia? This is like, I know that there's a rich music history, but lately, like as in lately the last 12 years, it, it's been absolutely out of control. I feel like all my new favorite bands are from Australia. It, it just doesn't right. stop. Is, is there just some kind of music revolution going on over there? Or is it, I, I'm, it's just, it just doesn't stop. It's like, there's this band, this band, this band. Yeah. What, what, what's going on over there? I think we're like 20 years behind, so we've just got up to date with the 90s. Yeah. So we're just like, man, grunge happened? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like the British invasion. It's the Australia, it's the Australian invasion going on right now. Yeah, yeah it well, is. It well, is. We've only just got Wi-Fi, so we're just stumbling across like <laughs> Soundgarden, like Nirvana. We're like, man, yeah. there was this Michael Kurt. Like, you can yeah. download <laughs> all the tracks on this thing called LimeWire as yeah. well. It's crazy. Just, LimeWire yeah. is revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, invested uh, everything into MySpace as well. So uh, I was just going to say, yeah. And by the way, if you want to hear psychedelic porn crumpets music, it's on Napster. It's on Napster. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Yeah. It, it's, also, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Oh no! I was going to say, us and Lars, we're fighting that good cause. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> We're punching yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> punching up. So I'm I'm a huge fan of the history of Australian music. Uh, you know, I I'm a huge fan of this punk band called The Saints. Are you familiar with The Saints? Yeah, they are a good band. Yeah, I mean they're rock, punk rock though. Like, yeah, I'm total punk rock. rock yeah, probably. The yeah, Saints. of course. When yeah. people think of Australia, they think of ACDC, but I, I, I think of the Saints. Uh, I love, you know, there's some great ACDC stuff, of course. But I think of the Saints. But also, let's uh, get a little uh, more current. What can you tell the listeners about the Smith Street Band? The Smith Street Band, uh, man, they, they're they've been playing around how long? I think when they first started, their vocals were like really unique in the way that old. I call him Billy uh, Wagner, but what is he? Will, yeah, Will, Wagner. Will, Will Wagner, yeah. But Billy Wagner sounds better. <laughs> Billy Wagner. <laughs> yeah. uh, His mates call him that yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I think it, when he started singing, it was like quite colloquial Australian. Mm -hmm. like Australiana. Australiana. He kind of invented this style. Now you have 
a plethora of bands sort of doing that, like not being scared to sort of hide your voice. And uh, it came out, I suppose it was like uh, maybe when the pop punk scene of like America came out and you had like Blink-182 or whatever and Sum 41, all those sort of like almost bought the before New Metal or the pop punk thing where it was like, such a heavy, strong American voice, which wasn't hidden. It was like, I'm not trying to be Bowie or like Mick Jagger or whatever. It was like, here's right. our voice. Gritty. Yeah, it was Rusty. gritty. And I think that's what happened in Australia as well. But it also happened simultaneously with the hip hop scene. And we've had some horrible music uh, come out. We can't talk about yeah. Aussie hip hop. Right. Aussie hip hop Can't let that one slide. That's... It's massive. <laughs> It's so bad though. Now some is great. Some I don't know. I don't like it, but I'm sure someone does. Kookaburras love it. That's what they call it. Uh, yeah. They're they're very open minded and into about everything, right? Um, exactly. it's such a good <laughs> yeah, such a good catalogue of tracks they've got as well. <laughs> so what is uh what is Tone City Studios? That's our friend Sam Ford's uh, little house studio, which he's actually renovating at the moment to move down to a place called Injured Up, where Tame and Pilot recorded their first two records. I think actually he records house. everything, Wave House, yeah. yeah. So Kevin actually just bought that, and he's, uh, I'm giving him a big plug here, but what's he doing? They're doing Inner Speaker Live, yeah, which is they're, nuts. They're, they're, at, at, they're at this point, does he need a plug? Come on, I mean. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no. Not Just at all. that one out. Yeah, but. It's all good. We I, watched I'm play. really excited to watch that. I know. We, we watched yeah. them play like one song the other at night. Choo- on Tuesday at our local music awards night. As the four-piece band as well. It was insane. Wow. It was I, I, insane. Thought Kev- I thought Kevin was recording all these in his house or in his apartment. or is this, He actually goes to a studio? Well, well had, that, that's his that, house, yeah. That, oh, album, okay. that inner speaker album, they, they recorded it. They like purposely you know, set up in there. Dude, that was the one that did it for me too. Like when, when Tame and Paula first started leaking into everywhere, uh, but Inner Speaker before before Tame and Paula was like massively huge. Inner yeah. Speaker landed in my lap, and I was listening to this, and I was like so thankful to the universe that somebody <laughs> was making yeah. this sound. Yeah, I think absolutely. that's what I think collectively it happened worldwide. It was just like Everyone and we were it. we were in Perth like, oh my God. Yeah. Like what? You could do this. It again? was the game changer. <laughs> it was. Yeah. 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 It was total sick. game changer. I was like, what is this trippy psychedelic music that sounds like it, 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 it almost me. like it almost has like a John Great Lennon point. type yeah. voice. Super, yeah. Like it, super it, it, it was just like super trap, yeah. yeah. It was like it was sick. It absolutely amazing. So uh, is psychedelic porn crumpets? I know that Jack, you really started this thing, but you have a full band, right? Uh, are there uh, are you two just kind of the main members? Or are there people missing right now, or what? What is the situation with the band? We have them in cry chambers. <laughs> Rich, Rich, yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, Rich doesn't want to wake up until he's back on tour, so he's just yeah. He's uh, who's the? Where, yeah, I was gonna say, where's the blonde dude that uh, uh, he worked at a place called the cat f- the cat food warehouse? Was that <laughs> who is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He's there. Uh, he's next to Walt Disney. He's a little bit. He's just chilly at the moment, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he, uh, I think he so, went up north. Yeah, he's, he's um, <laughs> we've gone so like eight hours south. He's gone about eight hours north. So we're okay. we're, we're, we're about sixteen hours difference at the moment. So uh, so so Jack, I'm directing this one at you. I saw that you recently ish went through a, a, a interesting phase of nine inch nails. Uh, what, yeah. what is it? The production? Is it just everything? What what is it about nine inch nails? I think it was mainly production. Cause I remember getting on the plane and I bought some new headphones and I remember being like, why doesn't my music sound good in this? Or why doesn't anything like all the lo-fi stuff I was listening to sound decent? I was trying to go through bands and like, be like, what was made for this, these things. And then uh, it kind of got me sort of really, my, I don't know, just cranking onto the production scale. And obviously I started listening to heaps of Slipknot and like new metal because of it. I was like, oh my God. Lim- yeah, I mean, I it, it like, sound, the production is amazing. Yeah. It, yeah. Porn sounds sick. It does. It's yeah. like, it's they massive. nailed it. And then as soon as I put on the Downward Spiral, I was like, oh my God, uh, 
Like, no, game over. I, it like, was like, the, the moment my life changed. Mr. Self-Destruct alone, that opening, yeah. it's got to be one of yeah. the greatest openers of all time. Yeah, and it's just the it's just this thing. You're just sort of yeah. just ready for it to just fully evolve. And you're like, oh, I, was, I remember being on a plane just like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I found music. It was so good. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. So, it's a masterpiece. He's, yeah, He's the bar. Trent Reznor is the bar. Mm. Yeah, and, well, uh, he's, such, he's such an audio nerd that he – he's so particular and and i just you can hear it in his production and his music where every detail matters and so it's kind of fun for being a listener where you know you're listening to something that somebody cared about massively deeply yeah it's interesting as i know him and atticus rose who are still recording together and producing together like doing all the soundtracks and uh i remember watching the social network and being like me too yeah film is incredible but not knowing they did the soundtrack and sort of just, there's just little bits and pieces and nuances that he manages to create where it's not like a hook, but it will just be this kind of little... Like baseline or something. Yeah, it'll be it's a like, thing or a change or just one chord that doesn't usually go together or work or maybe a pattern that your brain picks up, which you don't do in the first place, but it will just repeat back over to you. It's yeah. amazing how he's managed to capture music like that. So, I mean, yeah. It, 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 he's amazing. And I think everyone knows that, but <laughs> we're only just getting onto him now. We just I mean, twenty years right. later. Yeah. It, it's he's created some of those albums that uh, is going to forever be re-listenable. So even if you've heard Dark Side of the Moon a hundred times. The thing is, the next time you really sit down and listen to it, it's still going to sound amazing. Same with the Downward Spiral. Same with, you know, a, a, like an Ooh. old Stevie Wonder record. Like, it's always going to sound amazing. And, and yeah. he's created that. And I, I love that you uh, recognize that as well. And, you know, obviously, we've all been going through this pandemic. I know that things are slowly kind of, you know, getting uh, loose, uh, looser, uh, opening up a little bit, but it's still kind of questionable. We're all still unsure sure right um but you did a lot for being a pre- you're still a pretty new band you did a lot before the pandemic like you i mean you made it to seattle you played in japan and you've you've you uh what was that festival in japan that you played um oh, Sonic. 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 Yeah. yeah yeah i mean wow right uh cool. i wanted to ask about um what is it called what is pokari sweat oh, oh i knew that was coming that's, that's the best <laughs> the best Vodka mixer in the world. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. It's meant to be hydrated. Okay. So you shouldn't mix it with alcohol. <laughs> no, it's so good. It was like basically they'd given us for our rider like six beers between six of us and four bottles of vodka. And we were just like, who do they think we are? <laughs> Only six uh, beers, but then all the vodka in the world. All right. All the, all the vodka you can drink. It was like, here's a beer for after the show, and then get fucked. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> here, here, so, here's a beer for after the show, and you're going to be in jail for a year. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they didn't give it, that was like no mixes, but I'm sure that we did, or maybe we're looking in the wrong place, but we no, had so many just, Picari sweat. It's because it's such an obscure taste. It's like, well, you got to see what it goes with. It's like, kind of like, it's got, do you have Gatorade or Parade or like? It's really like viscous water, like salty it's like, water it's in a str- bottle. It's kind of like an electrolyte, but uh, in its own kind of plum is flavor. Salt? Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, know. It's like it, a lychee. It, I didn't think it had a flavor. I can't. I'm, like, every, it tastes I like Bacari sweat, basically. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I, I was reading about it after I heard you talk about it. I, I looked it up and I see that it is available in Australia as well. Yeah. But is it? Did, yeah. did you no, not know about it before? No, no. not at all. But when, it was like but, such a new flavor. I think it's only available in like the international store. Like, oh, uh, nice. yeah. You know, like, can't buy it at. Like, it wouldn't Coles. be like a petrol <laughs> station or whatever. Yeah. 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 But uh, you get, I mean, yeah, it was amazing. I remember we were the most hydrated drunks, like, ever. And it was, uh, I remember being so viscerally aware of what was going on, but it was, like, one side was just like, Jack, you can do a marathon, like, this is amazing. Like, and then one side was like, what is that band? But it was good. We watched Weezer side yeah, stage. Yeah, the, the, the lineup for that was ridiculous. Like, one act that didn't get to play because a typhoon rolled through the... The bay. Oh, so you were on stage, uh, Typhoon rolled through, and you were on stage yeah. watching no, Weezer? Or no, side stage? <laughs> yeah, let's keep that. Let's just, yeah. yeah it's multiple yeah, stages. That's perfect. What a great, I love that. <laughs> just Weezer <laughs> watched the Typhoon. Just Weezer like rolled through. That was it. Oh my God! Uh, my f- I have this friend. His name's Hari, and he is a uh, comedian. He has this Weezer joke, and he was talking about how he went to go see Weezer, and he was like. 
enjoying his himself and he's like all right weezer and he was looking around and noticed how young everybody was and he looked around he goes i had a revelation i realized that i'm the creepy old dude at the weezer show <laughs> and then he goes and then he goes a, a few moments go by and everyone's chanting beverly hills and like chanting to the music and he looks and he goes then i had another re revelation actually Weezer is the creepy dude. Yeah, at yeah. The, oh, dude, that's the Weezer <laughs> show. <laughs> Weezer's the creepy old dude. Yeah, they're, they're the creepy old dude. That's right. You're even yeah. a blog yeah. <laughs> That's no, cool, though. Like, you know what? The Blue Album is amazing. Yeah. It's, it's multi generational then. Talk about production, though. Uh, Rick Ocasek, I've been calling him Rick Ocasek, but when he passed away, uh, people were like, it's Ocasek, but um, Rick Ocasek from the Cars. I mean, that product, that pr talk about production, right? And we talked, uh, yeah. you were talking about Nirvana's Nevermind. I've actually got to interview Butch Vig twice. And, oh, and I honed in on like the production. How did you That's get so that? He, I, I bought his drum pack, actually. He just released yeah, this thing that. on a, yeah, the, machine, big drums. Yeah, on a Native Instruments. And it was That's like, cool. it's Butch a plug in. Is it like a, a plug-in? Or, yeah, or, plug -in. Oh, okay. yeah, Are you using Logic or are you using – what do you uh, use for recording? I use Ableton. I use Logic. You okay. use Ableton. Yeah. Luke uses Ableton. Yeah. I think Ableton – and then the guy, Jelly, so who we record with, he uses Ableton, uh, which is nice. And then I think – but he learned from Kev, so it was like mm -hmm. Kev uses Ableton. So I think as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, because I was using Cubase or something before. And I remember being like – yeah, and I was like, I don't even know. Where's my cursor? <laughs> I was just like, it's, it's not a good loading. Interface. Like, yeah, it was so bad. But uh, Ableton just seems to go from what I was doing more product, like more just like beats kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and then move into like the uh, music recording world. But I mean, it's still think, so amateur on it. Like, well, I, I might make the shift now because they've only just brought in comping for Ableton, which is a big thing for. I use Logic oh, for. Here he goes. No, <laughs> copy. It's great. If you want to just, find, it just makes so much easier. Yeah, it Ableton, is. that was the biggest pain with Ableton before. You couldn't just let. I thought it, I thought Ableton was like strictly for electronic music, but it, it maybe has evolved now. I, th oh, it's, but I think that's why, like you know, it's maybe everything. Kev stumbled on something. I think the reason, though, that what's great about putting it in an electronic world is like because a lot of people are kind of religiously analog with like their instruments whereas in ableton you can do so much more post-production which is i say so if your guitar sounds awful like most of the time our stuff does like pro tools or whatever is so good because you're like let's run it through this million dollar studio rig and make it sound exactly what it sounds like whereas ableton is like let's run it through my bedroom 300 dollars like little scarlet thing and make it sound like the million dollar studio so it's, right it's right nice. so that's what it's what's good for it okay well, I know before we started recording, I know that, uh, you know, uh, Jim that you were talking to before uh, told you about my game room. What's yeah. interesting <laughs> is that I feel like every band that I've interviewed during this pandemic, and I'm talking about bands from New Zealand, London, America, you name it, across the board, it seems like everybody has been playing their Nintendo Switch and especially Mario Kart. Have you, do you have that? Are you interested in that? Is that something? I'm not a gamer. I don't I play any games. I think I had a game of Mario Kart once. <laughs> no, but I, yeah. I've heard, I've, we, we've been open, which is nice. I think Australia, <laughs> there was like, we had about a couple of weeks where I smashed Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> right. then, yeah. yeah. But the first one, because we, we haven't got the second one out here yet. But, uh, <laughs> really? No. Wow. It's been I out a while. Got, how long was that? 15 years we got to wait? But it'll be, <laughs> it'll be this week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what, one day Pac-Man, Pac-Man will finally yeah. arrive in Australia. I mean, came a couple of months ago. It's revolutionized it. I mean, it's the biggest thing, biggest thing since Tetris. So. Yeah. Have you got like, a snake on your phone, by the way? Yeah. Yes, we got this yeah. phone. You wait, wait, the wall. Yeah. It's still, it's still, uh, still work. Uh, wait, wait, wait till you guys hear the Beatles. It's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, last question. Uh, I know that you're fans of bands all the way from T-Rex to Temples to King Gizzard and Tame Impala, of course, but what bands do you love that people might be surprised by that don't all fall into that kind of genre? I mean, I always throw Flying, Flying Lotus into that bracket, but you've probably got loads. He's amazing. I, um, who was we listening to on the way up in the car? David Axelrod. Oh, Ruby was bad. 
<laughs> it was sick. I was like, that guy, I did not actually listen to him before, which I feel shameful. But then when he played it, I was like, oh my God, that's that sample. <laughs> that's that sample. And then, oh, like, yeah, yeah sure, it yeah. was sick. But it was, uh, I mean, that's almost more entertaining sometimes for a listen. If you like getting into them previously, because some great engineer has listened to some beat that they've liked and you just hear a snippet. And then you get to experience the full thing for the first time. Like, oh, yeah, that's why I picked it. That's sick. Yeah. That little, like, two-second loop. You're just like, yeah. that's going to be a whole hip-hop track. Yeah. Straight up. Nuts. And the big, that Snoop Dogg one, what was that one? The I think it was the first one we did with Dr. Dre. California. <laughs> what is it? Oh, 2001. No, it was, uh, gang, gang, gang. It was uh, whatever Snoop Dogg's big hit was. Yeah. Like, on, do- on Doggy Style? Uh, no. 2001. Last year. Oh, smoke oh. weed every day. Oh, I'm chronic. Uh, smoke weed every day. Oh, yeah, blink, yeah, blink, 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 yeah, blink, yeah, blink, yeah, blink, yeah. blink, blink. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. That, it's almost one of the most synonymous things with hip hop, that riff. It's, it's so like, good. That is it's, so good. It's wicked. And then Talk it's just about great production, one, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Man. I love that documentary actually with Dre. What was that oh one? Oh my like, god, it was called the Defiant Ones. Yeah, Defiant ones, that yeah. has to be the Jimmy greatest. Irvine. I got. I got to tell you, not only was that documentary amazing, but one of my favorite moments was when Dre was uh, sitting out by the ocean and he was listening to Nirvana. Yeah, and he was like, he was freaking. It was "Stay Away." The song "Stay." He's like, "Stay Away." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and he took the headphone. He goes, "This like he's like Nirvana." He's like, "This makes me sweat." It's so good. Yeah. I'd think that, like, yeah, music transcends all genres as well. I think that you get to a point where when you're young, you kind of only listen to one kind of thing, and then you get older and you're like, why? Like, you might as well experience it all. So it's nice that Nirvana can be listened to by everyone. Well, Nirvana, now. and also he was jamming to craft work too. So he, he yeah. just knows good music. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. A, good he's a production Lord. stuff. That's what they really listen to, I think. It's just the production <laughs> and, like... My, my favorite thing in that whole series was when he was... Jimmy Irvine's walking down this beach or I don't even know where it is where they're all like stupidly amazing houses on the thing comes up is like for two minutes talking about Beats headphones then leaves and then <laughs> <laughs> and then like the world is different now yeah. like now the that's, world big. <laughs> yeah literally yeah. two yeah. influential people just sit down for a minute and the world is different you're like yeah. how does that happen wasn't that a huge contract as well that was like his oh, it's billion his his biggest contract. Yeah. I wish I had 30% of Jimmy Iovine's confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, he's been, I mean, him and John Lennon just recording him. I would have yeah. done so many little poos in that studio. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, once again, I want to thank you for taking the time for this. And obviously, <laughs> and, and believe me, you, you, you believe me, you chose a great band name because if anyone reads that, they're never going to forget it. And there is something going on, though, with band names like, OK, so in, in other words, when I got an email about here's a new single from Psychedelic Porn Crumpets, but then I look at my email uh, again and it says, here's a new song from Sunshine Frisbee Laser Beam. And here's a one for yeah, I'm just like, where are these com- coming from? And uh, I, I know there's no real answer. I know that you haven't really given like uh, and maybe that's what's great about it is there is no clear reason. What? There's been so many millions of bands before us, so all the one-letter bands are taken. Like, you can't be called anything with one letter now. The dictionary's done. The three, the three-word the band name. The double been... words were being used throughout, yeah, whatever. So we're, It's like, it, it's like might as well. Who, like, throwing caution to the wind. Who cares anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. That's it. It's a bad book. Judges buy it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you once again. Fantastic performance. And we, we've had you in Seattle. And once things are safe again, which is, I hope, soon and seemingly oh. so, we would love to have you back physically in Seattle in the KEXP live room. I would love to be back. We'd love to. Yeah, we're sick. All right. Well, thanks well, for having us as well. Absolutely. Right. It was wonderful meeting both of you. And thank you so much for, oh, for your time. Sure. And you, All right, man. everybody. There you go. Psychedelic Porn Crumpets live on KEXP at home. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.